During my journey into the world of the 6x7 format, the Mamiya RB was a camera that came really close to being my choice. And ever since, I've still been really intrigued by the system. So as of recently, I came across a package online for a pretty good price and decided to pick one up. So I headed out with a friend the other day and I shot my first roll of film using this system. And I wanted to post up this video just to talk a little bit about my initial impressions after using this camera and also about how I found it compares against the Pentax right off the bat. I definitely plan to do a more in-depth review after I use this system for a few more months, but at the very least, I hope this helps anyone who's either looking to learn a little bit more about the camera or is maybe trying to make a decision between this and the Pentax. So today I'm going to shoot a few test frames just to make sure that it actually works before I shoot any projects on it. But the first thing to do is load it. Luckily enough, my buddy Brody here shoots with an RB, so he's going to load it for me and give me a rundown. When it comes to the Mamiya RB67, it was released in three different versions. The original RB67 Pro, Pro S and the RB67 Pro SD, which was the last version made and also the model that I decided to pick up. The differences between the models really aren't major, but what I liked about the Pro SD is that it doesn't have foam light seals on the film back, so you don't really have to worry about any wearing out. So when I was first looking into a 6x7 camera, the RB stood out to me for a couple of reasons. And the first thing is that unlike the Pentax, you can swap out the film back to a different one mid-roll. And this is something that's pretty interesting. It definitely wasn't a deal breaker for me, obviously, but I think it would be especially handy if you're, say, someone who shoots both black and white or color, or if you're switching locations or subjects and you find something that's better suited to a different film stock. And on top of that, you can get a 6x4.5 back for this camera, which is pretty neat to be able to have one system that can shoot multi-formats. The second thing, which now I'm realizing is probably the most appealing feature for me, is definitely the rotating film back. Having the ability to change from landscape to portrait orientation by simply turning the film back is a feature that intrigued me at first, but I didn't realize I was gonna love it this much until I used the camera for the first time. All right, cool. I'll tell you what, like right off the bat, nicer to look through than the Pentax in terms of waist level finder, but uh, yeah, way more awkward to handhold, that's for sure. When it comes to lenses, both the Pentax and the Mamiya systems have a fully featured and capable lineup. With the Mamiya, I decided to go with two lenses to start, with the first one being the 90mm f3.5 KL. And this is actually what the camera came with when I bought it. And it's probably the lens that'll see the most use out of the two, similar to how I work with my Pentax. I did want to get something wider though, so I went with the 65mm f4.5 C, which for the type of work I do is probably the widest that I would go. For all you 35 mil shooters, the 90 millimeter would be roughly equivalent to about a 45, and the 65 would be equivalent to maybe just a bit wider than a 35. When it comes to usability, right off the bat, the RB67 felt a little bit awkward to me, and that's obviously because I'm really used to working with the Pentax. With the RB and the waistable finder, I found myself cradling the camera and pressing it against my chest. That worked fine and I wouldn't hesitate to shoot like that, but I could see it being a bit limiting at times. Again though, this is coming from someone who shoots with the Pentax as their main camera and has come to love it for its SLR style handling. I am looking forward to getting accustomed to the RB and seeing how I like it after using it for a few more months. Now there is the option of buying a prism finder for the Mamiya as well as a left hand speed grip. And I've never used either of them, but from what I've seen when they're mounted, the whole camera package does get pretty large. Again though, this all comes down to what and how you photograph. And that's why I really do think that there is no one perfect camera system for every photographer. The nice thing is, is that any of the 6x7 offerings are definitely gonna perform from a quality standpoint. So it's really just a matter of taking the time to really think about what features you need and how you work, and then choosing the camera system that suits you best. Oh, this is cool. Left my gear downstairs because I didn't think there was gonna be anything to shoot, but definitely a shot back there. 
So I'm gonna try out the 65, got a pretty cool shot lined up. So far with the little experience I have using the Mamiya, I'd say that if I were to use it as my sole 6x7 setup, a lot of the work would probably be done on a tripod. But I still wouldn't hesitate to use it handheld whenever possible. I really think for me it's going to come down to spending some more time using this camera and seeing how my workflow develops. So to wrap things up, I gotta say that for the price, this is a pretty amazing piece of equipment that's probably going to provide you with everything you need from a results standpoint. If you're the type of photographer that doesn't mind working from a tripod, or if you're comfortable using this camera handheld with the waist level finder, it may just be perfect for you. When it comes down to price versus performance, this has got to be one of the best values currently on the market in the film photography world. I'm definitely looking forward to using this camera more over the next few months, so make sure that you stay tuned for a more in-depth review in the future.